In this video, I want to talk about when the next good opportunity to short the markets may occur. Uh, using my screening tool at screener.nextbigtrade.com, we can see that the major market indexes are still solidly in bear markets. The Dow Jones is currently the strongest index, which is a sign that the market is still extremely defensive currently because the large cap stocks are leading the other indexes. Noticeably, the NASDAQ only has 14.5% of stocks in stage two, which is extremely weak for the overall markets and shows that big money isn't flowing into growth stocks currently. This also shows that if you're trying to fight the market, um, your odds of success are are incredibly poor right now because only you know about 15% of stocks are actually going up right now versus 71% of stocks are in a downtrend so if you're trying to fight this market and go long in a bear market you're fighting um, a losing battle so far uh, now whenever this market does transition back into a bull market you're, you're gonna see a large percentage of stocks start moving into stage one which signifies that the stage four downtrends are over and that potentially a new bull market could be setting up. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to happen because they can move back into stage four and continue the bear market, but that's the precursor to a new bull market is stocks setting up to move into stage two. And we're just not seeing that yet in any of the major indexes. The, the Dow only has 3% of stocks in stage one. The S&P, NASDAQ still have less than 10% of stocks in stage one. So this is still definitely a stage four bear market until we see more improvement across the entire market. Same thing with looking at my watch list page. You'll start to see more stocks setting up into a stage two advance um, in this list once the market does move back into a bull market. But we're just not seeing that currently. I mean, the only stocks that are popping into this list are mostly related to gold and gold mining because that sector is essentially leading the markets right now and other than that you're seeing you're seeing a few growth stocks here or there and some defensive stocks but nothing that's showing that uh, sectors are starting to strengthen and the over which would push the overall markets back into a bull market now tactically good shorting opportunities occur when the percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 moves above 65% or so, um, which I talked about in a previous video called Tactics for Shorting the Stock Market. Um, we can see that this occurred uh, the last time back in November when we had about 80% of stocks in the S&P 500 above the 50-day moving average, which corresponded to the October November peak which essentially started th this current bear market cycle um, right now we're sitting at about 50 to 55 percent of stocks so we're getting close to that number that's you know more important which is 65 percent and above which you know it presents a good opportunity to short the market if we take a look at what happened during the bear market from 2007 to 2009 I've highlighted four major opportunities where the percentage of stocks uh, moved above 65% and the market topped out and the bear market down legs began. So what's noticeable is that when this bear market started, it took about a full year in 2007 for the market to actually top. E each of the, the small uh, declines back then were, were mostly um, the bounces negated the damage until we started finally moved into um, another lower high back in uh, the April May time frame in 2008 and you can see that the percentage of stocks moved close to 80 percent then and this is where the bear market really kicked off um, and you can see that the market only lost about 150 points from 1550 down to 1400 over a period of a year and a half before really the carnage started beginning. So 
and this is kind of corresponding to where we are now because of this this March, April, May time frame that we're getting into um, in 2016 pretty soon could kind of correspond to what happened um, back in 2008 where it, it led into another major um, high in the bear market. And then the market lost about 200 points into July, which is typically the, the, the summer doldrums. And then we had another uh, mini rally over a period of a few months, which brought the percentage of stocks back above 65% into September. And then we really had the major smash in stocks where they lost about 650 points on the S&P 500. And this was the majority of the bear market, which occurred over really a period of three months. So this is why timing bear markets is extremely critical because the plunges occur over a short period of time. And if you're not positioned uh, for those plunges, you're going to basically miss them. And the problem is, is that even if you if you position too early, you end up um, kind of wasting your time. And, and, you know, eventually you might get stopped out because if you sell too late, um, you have to wait a while for the next plunge to begin. So, for instance, if you tried shorting at the bottom of this first major down leg back in March or so 2008, you had to wait all the way until September for the uh, market to really start declining again. And you had to suffer through a major bear market rally before the market started declining again. So it's safer to establish shorts when there's a larger number of stocks back above the 50 day moving average. And correspondingly, I've talked about in the past, really the 30 week moving average is where you want to start shorting stocks when the market's actually above that moving average. So if we look at the transports right now, the transports have actually been a, a leading tell for the this bear market because they started declining way back in early 2015 before the S&P 500 and NASDAQ started falling. So if you, you can tell that, you know, this bear market has, has declined below the 30 week moving average um, for almost a year now, basically a year in April. And the last good shorting opportunity was that uh, October, November high where we went up and kissed the 30 day moving average it acted as resistance then we got this plunge into january and notice that the transports have actually rallied since uh early this year while the rest of the market has gone sideways to lower so the transports bottomed first and have bounced since then and you know the next good shorting opportunity could occur over the next few weeks to maybe month or two where if we can get back above this moving average and you know have more bears capitulate it could set up the next down leg essentially uh, notice that volume hasn't been really been too impressive either if we're, if we were going to launch into a new bull market you'd probably see bigger volume at the bottom signaling that more of the big money is getting back in um now one reason i believe that the market has still more time to uh, rally before the next bear market down leg is going to begin is the fact that there's some sectors like the financials are still extremely oversold. Um, notice how you know this the XLF ETF is still about a point and a half below the 30 week moving average and just had a big um, hammer candlestick weekly candle on high volume, which typically puts in a short-term bottom uh, for a move. We saw that happen back in August last year and could be signaling that it's going to take a little bit more time, maybe a few weeks to a month or so before the next major shorting opportunity occurs. Uh, one more thing to note is that if, if this really were the end of the bear market, we would see growth stocks like Under Armour, uh, Nike, Facebook, um, they would start to move higher before the major indexes turned higher, and we're just not seeing that right now. Notice how Under Armour is actually 
declining uh, below the 30 week moving average, which is now in a downtrend, and this is acting as resistance. So when you see this kind of stuff happening in the major growth stocks in the market, it shows that the big money is really not piling back in and the market is not in position to really rally because there's nothing to really push it higher. Um, look at like Netflix. You can see that you know there's barely been any buying pressure after the major um, meltdown from 130 down to 80. Um, this actually looks like a pretty bearish setup if it flags here and then continues its downtrend um, after more consolidation. Even like Facebook, um, you would think that considering the market's been rallying for the last couple of weeks, Facebook, uh, the pressure on the stock would have, would have been alleviated, and you would see the stock make new highs, but that hasn't happened at all. And it's really, it you know you can see that it's just fighting resistance right now. So as soon as Facebook gets below the 30-week moving average, that'll be a bad sign for the overall market that there's really no leadership that can push it back higher. So in conclusion, we're kind of looking for the S&P 500 to move back above the 30-week moving average and the percentage of stocks to get a little bit higher before um, the next um, good tactical shorting opportunity um, occurs.